My plan today is to make another one of these. This is a bow and arrow that I made out of Alaskan birch. Since Alaska has no native hardwoods, it's pretty hard to make a bow and arrow up here. So I have to use some inferior woods, but with the use of fire, I can harden the wood on the belly side of the bow, and then that makes it a lot stronger. So I'm gonna make another one. This one is only 25 pounds pull. I'm gonna make the next one 40. I can't take a picture for your dad. one bow and arrow. All right, so this is called Alaskan paper birch. It's different than the regular paper birch that grows in the lower 48. It is more similar to a yellow birch than it is to paper. So it's got a little bit more um, resistance to breaking on the tension side of the bow. So I'm just going to split this. I'm gonna pick the best side and then I'm going to split the whole log down the center and that way I just have a lot less carving to do. Ouch. <laughs> I want to make sure to save all this because we're going to use it later. I'm scraping off the inner bark with the back of my knife. This layer here that's orange is called cambium and it's actually, if you look at the cross section of a log, that's the only part of the tree that's alive. So all of the sap is moving through this. But I'm just scraping it off so I have a nice smooth surface to draw the shape of my bow on. Okay, for the layout of the bow, I'm gonna do 64 inches. So I'm gonna do 64 inches long because I have a 28 inch draw length. I'll mark the center point, which is right here, put a C, and then two inches up from that, and then two inches up from that on either side. That's my, these four inches are my handle section, and then there are two inch fades on either side. The widest part of the limbs are going to be 2 inches and then 12 inches from the end it's going to start tapering down to 3 quarters of an inch. And the handle will be 1 inch. Now that I have my layout, I basically just need to get rid of all of the wood that's outside of those lines. And the quickest way I know how to do that is to take my saw and cut down every eight inches or so, and then split down the log to those lines that I cut with my saw with a hammer and a chisel, or in this case, my little butcher knife. This knife that I have, it's all bent and warped. It's, uh, I got it from Salvation Army for like 25 cents. It's nothing special, but the reason that I like it is because it's flat on the back and because I don't care about it at all, I don't mind hitting it with a hammer or even using it to scrape, which is a terrible thing to do to a knife that you like. 
but I can always go get another one of these for 25 cents. Now that I got it split down relatively close to my lines, um, I'm just going to use a draw knife because I have a little bit more accuracy with this to get it even closer. So I've just put it in a bench vise and I'm using a little draw knife that my grandpa bought me. Now this is at the stage where I would call it a blank, so it's uh, obviously too thick to bend, but it's shaped like a bow. I just need to come back with much more precise tools and start slowly taking wood off of here so that it'll bend. And that's what takes me the most time. So the next step is to floor tiller. So I'm just pushing and seeing how much it bends, flipping it over, checking how much it bends, and kind of looking to see where the stiff spots are. Definitely the end of this limb is stiff. And I'm gonna take this fancy new rasp that I just bought, and I'm gonna take wood off the end so that it bends more smoothly. So now it's time to put a string on this, so I need to put knocks in the end. So I'm just going to mark some lines and go at a 45 degree angle towards the belly of the bow. What I've done is I've taken a 2x6, I cut it at 66 inches long, and then marked it at an inch and a half on both ends, and then 4 inches in the middle, and then I took um, a dowel and bent it from these marks so it have kind of a sloping radius. But what this is going to do is it's going to make my bow stronger by reflexing it so that instead of wanting to go back to straight, it wants to go back to more than straight. But now I need to build a fire. I'm going to build the fire entirely with the wood that I cut off of the belly side of the bow. So I'm going to take the bark and I'm going to shred it real small to start the fire. And then these smaller chips that I took off with my draw knife will be the kindling. And the big pieces from the belly will be the bulk of the fire. The great thing about birch wood is that it burns really easily. But the bad thing about birch wood is that my bow might catch on fire. So I'm gonna let this burn down to coals and then wait until there's no active flames, but it should be too hot to hold my hand over for more than three seconds. And then I'll put my bow back on top.
This browning looks good, but near the ends it's pretty light, so I need to rake the fire towards the end of the log. There's definitely some lighter spots, like here is not so dark in here, but by the time I scrape it to tiller it, you're probably not going to see any darkness at all. I'm going to let it cool on this form, and then I'll take it off in a couple hours and start tillering. Okay, so the issue I'm running into now is propeller twist. So if you can see, this limb is angled this way, and then the top limb is angled this way. So it's like a propeller for an airplane. So since I only have two clamps, I'm just going to build half of my fire in my fire trench, and I'm going to secure the handle in with wedges and then I'm going to use a clamp in the middle to try and get the twist out and then keep one clamp on the end so that this stays straight as well. I think I should be able to string it up now. It looks pretty good. Finally. You can see that side has more of a gap than this side, so I gotta take some more off of this side. But I kinda like how it's bending. So if I put the knock right where the bow was, it'd be longer than my arrow. So I tillered it past the length of an arrow. I'm happy with how that's looking. I'm just gonna shape the handle, and then uh, it's ready to shoot. Here's the handle. I left the cambium on the back just a little bit, so it's got some cool camo pattern. Nice and polished handle. This is my 
thumb groove. See that? So nice and comfortable to hold either left or right handed. So my friend Rob is on his way over here and he's left handed. And then there's, this is the top limb. And then this is the bottom limb. Whoa, whoa. And the reason that the limbs are different is because this one, the string will never ever come off. But this one, the string slides down the limb to prevent the string from untwisting when it's not ready to shoot. Bond right here. Whoa. Hopefully you can see around the dogs. Hey! Berkeley just retrieved my arrow. <laughs> but he only pulled half of it out of the target. <sighs> Grr. So you just aim right down the arrow. I'm like looking down the arrow, but it always, for me, because it's on the left side of the bow, it's going to end up way further left and high than you think. And for you, it's going to be high and right. So I'm holding it one finger above, two below, mm -hmm. and I tilt the bow at a 45 degree angle. Mm -hmm. And then once I start drawing back, I drop my finger. Okay. And then I'm putting that knock just below my eye. Okay. And you're looking down the arrow, but it's... Like, right now the arrow's pointing, the arrow tip is on his front leg, but it's going to end up being dead center, because okay. I just know so how just much. Like, you just, like, know where it's going to fly. Yeah, I'm, like, looking past the arrow. Okay. Now that I have two of these, I don't have to go hunting alone. So this one's about 40 pounds at 28 inches, and this one's about 25 pounds at 28 inches, but both should be plenty good for hunting game birds in the mountains here in Alaska. Small game opener is not tomorrow, but the next day. And as soon as it opens, I'm going to head into the mountains and go after some ptarmigan. So, stay tuned. If I don't catch any, you won't see a video about it.